Hey everybody, it's Gomadex, and welcome back to another draft of the new and improved Arena Cube. So let's see what we've opened up here, and see what we can try to move into. So, we really want to start out with just the most powerful card in the pack, which can be really hard to evaluate in a cube, seeing as everything is quite good. But, the red stuff looks like this is really just for a mono-red kind of build, or a very aggressive build, and then just a couple random removal spells, so I don't think I'm moving into red here. Black is just a removal spell, white is a removal spell, and a blade. don't think I'm moving into any of that stuff. So it's kind of between... Well, I guess there is Elspeth in white as well, but I'm not the biggest fan of this Planeswalker. Um, seeing as she has all minus abilities, she does keep coming back with that escape, so potentially over the course of a long game you can get tons and tons and tons of value out of this. Uh, but she is pretty slow in general. Doesn't do much by herself. I don't know, she might still be the pick though, because she is a decent planeswalker. But I do really like uh, Ovia Pashiri in limited formats, because if you ever run out of cards, she gives you two very, very strong things to do. Uh, three mana for a 1-1 isn't that strong, but the fact that it it um, pushes into that second ability there, helps you get a larger creature for that five mana ability, is uh, is quite powerful. So I think I'm actually just gonna start with Ovia, just because um, in my experience with how powerful she is in a regular limited format, I have to assume she's still at least decent in cube. Of course in cube, because every card is really powerful, um, you're not gonna be in as many situations where you and your opponent are just top decking, but if you're ever in a position where you need a mana sink, Ovia is just one of the best mana sinks. Uh, in the game, I feel. So we do have a Llanowar Elves, which is quite nice. Ramp in green, if we want to just stick to that. In black, Command the Dreadhorde is interesting. If you have a bunch of stuff in your graveyard, it is going to cost a lot of life to do it, but you can bring a ton of stuff back, which could be a big swing. A Johnny's pretty cool. Give all your creatures vigilance, and you can put a counter on all your creatures and all your planeswalkers. Lots of interesting stuff here. Obviously, Cloud Blazer is just decent value. I don't know how I feel about Seagate Restoration or any of the lands. Crawling Barons is... I kind of think I'm going to take Crawling Barons for the same reason as Ovia, but I feel this might be a bit better because we can play this into any deck that we draft, and it just gives us something to do anytime we have extra mana. No matter what, we can just be pump pumping up this land until it turns into a really big threat on its own, which is very nice. Um... This card is just really, really good in Zendikar Draft, and uh, yeah, I think it should be should be decent in cube as well. Ooh, Realm Cloaked Giant. Could take a Wrath effect here, try to move into something a little controlling. This card is really nice because it's both a Wrath on turn 5 and it gives you something to play on that empty board once you've got 7 mana, which is pretty impressive. There's an Inscription of Abundance to go along with the the green cards, if we want to try to move into that. Does a lot of different things, if you kick it. Mainly just makes something beefy in fights. I think it's probably between the Inscription and the Realm Cloaked Giant for me personally here. And... I don't know, Realm Cloaked Giant just seems kind of insane. I kind of want to move in on that. Plus that arc is so beautiful. It's so pretty. That shouldn't factor into it, but it does for me. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie about it. Ooh, Kazandu Mammoth in green. Angel of Invention in white, though. Cube is, uh, as I say every time I draft Cube, Cube is quite a difficult format to get a, a handle on just because everything is, everything is great. So, Kazandu Mammoth, obviously I love all of the modal double-faced land cards. It just feels really great to to flood or screw less often, and they all help out with that. Branching Evolution feels a little uh, a little too build around for me, um, but Angel of Invention is just really strong just by itself as well. Don't know for sure what I'm doing here. I guess Angel of Invention does kind of go with our, our green card. If we go into like Selesnya tokens, that could be pretty good because it buffs your whole field. Nice little anthem effect. I don't know, I'll take the angel here. And uh, we might even uh, end up cutting green and just staying in white here, especially with a cleansing nova here. We can move into a more controlling kind of white build. Crawling Barons does 
uh, seemed like it would work really well in a deck with a lot of wraths because obviously this is only a creature when you're activating it as a creature so it gives you something that over the course of the game can become a really big threat while also avoiding wrath effects you just don't activate it the turn you're gonna wrath so that seems pretty nice overwhelming splendor is cool it basically shuts down your opponent entirely all their creatures are just one ones that can't do anything um, and they can't activate any abilities or anything pretty insane card but it is a ton of mana to do it um, so i'm not 100 percent sure uh, how i feel about that one i do know that I like Wrath Effects though, so I'm gonna scoop up that Cleansing Nova. Birth of Miletus seems pretty great for a controlling build. This card is uh, is a card that used to see a lot of play in standard, uh, in Azorius control decks. I don't know if it's seeing play anymore, but this card for two mana, you're getting a 0-4 wall to hold off the aggressive decks. You're also getting two life to hold off the aggressive decks, and you're picking up a planes from your deck, putting it in your hand. So this card's pretty decent. Ratchet Bomb can blow up every token on the board, just the second you play it, just two mana, bam, destroy all tokens. Or you can start putting char charge counters on it to destroy things at a higher mana cost instead. So Ratchet Bomb is, is a contender here. There's also Hollowed Fountain if we want to try to do like a white-blue control build. Grateful Apparition, I'm not so sure about. Um, we really want to be doing a lot of plus one, plus one, shen plus one, plus one counter shenanigans. And we do already have two Wraths that would kill the Apparition anyway, and it's only a 1-1 one -one by itself. I feel like that might be, that's another one that feels a little too build around for me. Um, the kind of proliferate shenanigan, shenanigans kind of strategy. Here we have a Planeswalker, we've got Tezzeret. However, this is a pretty large, pretty slow Planeswalker. At 5 mana you start getting like a 1-1 one, one out every turn, or drawing a card every turn. Not that great, pretty expensive to do. Um, but obviously if it stays on the board, you do accrue a lot of value from that. There's another Wrath, this one in black, Languish. Everything gets minus four, minus four. Lithoform Engine, really weird, interesting build around card. Don't know if I'm going to go all in on that. Traxos, another one you want a lot of artifacts or legendary spells to use that. I think I'm just going to take a white card here. I could take Valorous Stance uh, as just like a targeted removal spell or Fairgrounds Warden. Now the only thing I don't like about Fairgrounds Warden that would maybe make me take Valorous Stance is it is not a great combo with Wrath Effects. If I Fairgrounds Warden something, then when I Wrath Effect, my Fairgrounds Warden will die and whatever I exiled will come back, but I still feel like it's enough better than just like a single targeted removal spell uh, that I'm going to take it first. I don't know how correct that is. It might not be. Um, this will be a pretty easy Maze Mind Tome. This is a card I would play in most decks, uh, unless I'm like very aggressive, like Mono Red or something. This card just gives you a lot of value throughout the game. You're drawing basically four, four cards out of it if you're always using the second ability. Or if you don't have the mana to do it, you can scry a little bit with it first and just draw a couple cards. So I do like Maze Mind Tome. And every white card in this pack wields, so that is a really good sign. Um, we might even be able to try to push into Mono White here in that case. Because uh, Kabir Takedown Wield, Ancestral Blade Wield, and Elspeth Wield, I'm pretty certain that is every single white card in this pack. Um, if there was another one in here, it was not very memorable to me. So, all the mildly decent white cards in this pack wield. I don't know what's going to be best in a control deck. I mean, Elspeth, we're definitely playing the long game with multiple Wraths and stuff, so being able to just keep escaping her and getting value multiple times might be pretty good. So I will roll with the Elspeth there. Venerated Loxodon feels like really not the kind of thing we want in a deck with a bunch of Wraths. This wants you to have a lot of early game creatures to convoke it to play it for cheap and also put a plus one plus one counter on all the creatures that you convoked it with. However, it is the only straight up white card in this pack, but I do feel like Cloud Blazer would probably be better. Um, and we could try to move into like white blue here. We could also just take like a dual land. Uh, but yeah, I don't feel like Loxodon is going to be a card that works too well in our deck. Whereas Cloud Blazer could be great. And here's a Solendi Vision. This will be really easy. Um, it is a modal double face land card, and I absolutely love those. And this one's one of the better ones. It's got a pretty good instant attached to it. Look at the top six cards of your library, reveal an instant or sorcery from among them, and put it into your hand. Put the rest on bottom, so this can obviously try to grab us a Wrath when we need it. Or whatever else we end up picking up. <laughs> right now it's basically just a couple Wraths as our instants and sorceries. So... Hypnotic Sprite, um, counter something that costs three or less. This seems okay. Sacred Cat, I don't know. 1-1, one, one, you get it back. Swift Response, destroy a tap creature. Yeah, I I'll just roll with the Hypnotic Sprite here. Once again, um, for 
for a really dumb reason. It's just the prettiest card in the pack. I really like the card styles in most sets, uh, but especially Eldraine. They are just absolutely beautiful. So that should not factor into your picks. I don't recommend that, but uh, it's not going to stop me from doing it. And this is a really great sign. Ratchet Bomb and Hall Hallowed Fountain are both cards that work great in a controlling deck. Uh, I am going to take the Hallowed Fountain here. I don't know how well... Um, how often my opponent's going to be playing a ton of tokens. Ratchet Bomb is a card I would definitely take if I were playing de best 2 out of 3 cube, uh, but in just in just the best of 1 games, like the the format that I'm playing right now is, I don't know how often Ratchet Bomb's going to be great, because if I'm just playing against an aggressive, like, Gruul deck or something, they're much more likely to just curve out and go 1 drop, 2 drop, 3 drop, in which case Ratchet Bomb is likely to only kill 1 or 2 things than... Um, then play a deck with just a bunch of one drops. So, Ratchet Bomb definitely better in the sideboard because it's it's absolutely at its best when your opponent is playing a deck with a ton of tokens. And I haven't mentioned anything in this pack yet uh, because I felt it was important to uh, describe what I was talking about with Ratchet Bomb. And all these cards kind of suck. Uh, Dauntless Bodyguard, Loyal Pegasus, and Seasoned Hollow Blade are all good for a very aggressive deck, which is not what we're looking at here. So I'm thinking Exclusion Mage is going to be the pick. Uh, three mana for a two two. And when it enters the battlefield, return a creature an opponent controls to its owner's hand. So it's nice at slowing down your opponent, making sure you survive for a bit. Because you bounce one of their creatures back, and you've got a nice little chump blocker. Preferably a blocker that could trade with something. What do we have now? Perilous Vault is another Wrath effect. Exile all non-land permanents with that ability there. There's also Field of the Dead, but we are very unlikely to be able to get seven lands with different names. In just a little two-color deck here. Uh, there's a Skycat Sovereign that is in our colors. I have to assume that'll wheel, seeing as there was a Hollowed Fountain last pick, Cloud Blazer pretty late, and tons of white uh, late in the last pack. Um, so I don't think I need to take Skycat Sovereign here. It's also not like perfect for our deck, so it's not super exciting. Uh, but it is something I would take later. I think I'm just going to take another Wrath, just take a Perilous Vault here. Um, other than that, I'm just taking like a little draw spell or maybe a little flyer. Scoop up the Perilous Vault for now. Ooh, Karn is pretty good. That plus one ability and the minus one abil ability just gets you a lot of value throughout the game. It's pretty hard to take down. He starts with five loyalty, so the second you plus one, he's got six loyalty. And uh, if you're in a position where you just need little chumpers, you can obviously just use the minus two as well. We're very unlikely to have enough artifacts to where the constructs are going to be that impressive, but having the ability to just poop out a little bit of chump blockers is nice. And a Boon of the Wishgiver is probably the other card that would be best for this kind of deck, but Merfolk Trickster as well could help us survive the early game, which is not bad as all. Not bad at all. A little flash uh, flash blocker to get in there and try to trade off with something. Or you can even kill it if you're in a lucky situation. So Harmonious Archon. Six mana for a four five flyer. You get two 1-1 one, one humans, but all other creatures have base power and toughness 3-3, three, three. so you basically get two 3-3s, three, and all your opponent's creatures are now just 3-3s. Three, three. I think that's probably the pick here. Could take a Godless Shrine, just in case I want to splash in black later. Does not seem as, press, as impressive as just taking the Archon here. There's also Bag of Holding, but I already have like a Maze Mind Tome for a similar sort of effect. And Reconnaissance Mission is definitely not for this deck. We're not going to be uh, hitting our opponent very often. So I'll scoop up a Harmonious Archon there. Now what do we have? We do have a Thirst for Knowledge. Nice instant speed draw spell. If you have enough artifacts in your deck, you only have to discard one card when you discard for it. We've got two artifacts right now. Doesn't seem incredibly impressive, but it is nice. There's also Commit to Memory. This is a pretty slow card, not a huge fan of this, um, especially because the memory half, you're playing six mana at sorcery speed to do that, so your opponent is going to have access to the seven cards that they draw um, much sooner than you will, uh, just because um, they'll actually have all of their mana untapped. Uh, so I think it'll be Search for Escanta here. This is just another card that is an absolute uh, house in control decks. Once you flip this, this just gives you a ton of value, because you just keep trying to draw non-land cards every turn. So very nice pick there. So we have Umaro Wizard. It is a flip a land, but it's kind of one of the weaker ones, um, especially in cube, just like a five mana four three is kind of whatever. Um, 
but other than that, there's like a folio of fancies for trying to mill our opponents out. Or Lurus of the Dream Den is fun, and I could play it with just white, so I could go double white and one to play Lurus. And then potentially I could recast uh, my little hypnotic sprite and stuff. I could even recast like Birth of Miletus after it... Uh, after it sacrifices to its Saga ability. I'll just roll with Alluris for now. At worst, it's a 3-mana three 3-2 three, lifelinker, which is another one of those cards that can trade with something in the early game and give us some life back, so it just helps us survive against really aggressive decks. Uh, and this pack, there's literally only one card, one card in our colors, I think. It's just SRAM's expertise. So we'll scoop that up. Not exactly what I'm looking for in this deck, but it could be a thing. We could take Ruin Grab, try to use Mill as our win condition, but I think... I think I kind of want to just try to beat our opponent down with one of our random big bombs. And I do like Amiria's Call a lot. This is a really good flip card. It's a land or two 4-4 four, four white angels for a bunch of mana, true, but it is a really good ability to have if you top deck this land in the late game. You can just do that. And here, every single white card in the pack is back again, so we're just going to be... We're going to be heavily white here. Uh, I think a mono white deck is definitely possible in this draft. I don't think I'll end up in it because I do really like my blue stuff right now. Search for Ascanta and Solid Division especially. Um, but my blue can kind of just be a little little tiny splash here. I guess I'm going with Dauntless Bodyguard over like the Hallow Blade. And the Skycat Sovereign wields as well as Terramander and Tetsuko Umezawa. So our colors are seeming really open. Don't have a lot to work with Divine Visitation. It's a pretty build around card as well, so I'm just gonna roll with the Sky Cat. And Merfolk Trickster Wield as well. Super nice. Another little early game blocker. The only thing I don't like about the Trickster is it is a double blue for its mana cost, and costing two blue mana on turn two is gonna be pretty hard to hit, uh, most likely in our deck, because we're probably gonna be a lot heavier into white than blue with this. Uh, with the way this draft has gone so far, for sure. And I'll just take some random off-color uh, duels anytime I see them, just in case. And now I can take an Umara Wizard, and I'll probably play it. I mean, it's a, it's a flip land card. Whoo! What a pay- Oh no! Ugin, too! Oh my god. Um, so this is going to be... This is, this is going to be a make-it-or-break-it thing here. I really... It's... I'm going to make a really bold pick here. I'm going to take Ugin. And, uh, I mean, Ugin's just the strongest card uh, in general. Ugin's absolutely insane. It's really hard to lose once you've cast an Ugin. So I guess it's not that bold of a pick here. But the bold thing about this pick is Sphinx's Revelation is also incredibly, incredibly powerful. And it's kind of perfect for this deck. But my thinking is, even though it's insanely powerful, with the way we've seen things wheeling, I am really I hoping and assuming that that can wheel in this draft. Normally you would not expect something like Sphinx's Revelation to wheel, but I feel like I might be able to get a Sphinx's Revelation pick 9, and that would be really cool. So I 100% hope that it happens. So, we do have a cast out here. Um, once again, that's a little awkward with, like, Perilous Vault, um, but it works with uh, with Cleansing Nova and Realm Cloak Giant, because those just hit kill creatures. So Cast Out could be a nice instant speed removal spell. Essence Capture could be a counter spell, or we have Glacial Fortress for some mana fixing. We do want to pick these up, but yet again, I feel like unless there's somebody drafting, like, five color at this table, Glacial Fortress will probably wheel with how we've been seeing cards wheeling in the packs. So I'm going to scoop up a Cast Out. Now, Elspeth Conquers Death, another great card for a controlling build. So is Voracious Great Shark, though. 5 mana for a 5-4 flash, and you counter an artifact or creature spell. So you counter their spell, and you're left with a pretty decently sized threat on the field. So I really like that. But I do also like Elspeth Conquers. Exile something when you play it, and then bring back a creature Planeswalker with an extra counter on it. I like both of these cards a lot. Um, white seemed more open. Uh, so I guess I can take the Great Shark first and hope that Elspeth Conquers Death wheels. I'm not I'm not super sure that'll happen, but it seems like there's at least not a lot of people in white, and if there is somebody else in white, I'm hoping they'll take, like, Shalai or Legion's Landing first. Maybe they're on a more aggressive build than we are, and we can wheel that Elspeth Conquers Death without too much, uh, without too much work. 
We do have another Flash Flyer, Thrix here. Seems not bad at all. Wardent and Warden is nice. Put an attacking or blocking creature on top of its owner's library for two mana. Nice cheap, uh, cheap temporary removal spell with a 4-4 attached on the other side if we draw it in the late game. Or we don't need it as removal, so this seems pretty good. Um, this is probably the most likely card to wheel out of all these, but I guess you can cast it for double white or double blue if you're just doing the first half. Yorian is like, whatever. I'm just going to take Warrant Warden anyway, even though it'll, it'll probably wheel, just because the other cards, I feel like it's enough better than the other cards that I'm fine, uh, I'm fine with scooping that up, and something else will probably wheel. I'll just take whatever wheels and not have to make the decision there. Now I'm just taking like a counter spell, I guess, because Curiosity is not really for this deck. Um, maybe Giant Killer would be good in this deck. Destroy a creature with power 4 or greater, and then we can start tapping things down with it. So that seems fine. Yeah, Giant Killer or Essence Scatter, I feel, are the best cards for this specifically. Basri is really just for an aggressive deck, unfortunately, so yet another Planeswalker we're just going to pass right on by. Wrath of God. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. I'll just have a million Wrath Effects. Actually, this is another kind of hard pick. I could take another Wrath Effect, or I can take a Talrand. I do have a lot of Instant Sorceries um, in general, but I have a, like, a lot of enchantments and stuff too, and creatures. Talrand might not be that insane in this deck. Talrand is really, really good when you have a ton of counter spells, and I don't actually have that many. I have more Wrath Effects than Counter Effects, so Talrand is definitely pretty awkward with Wrath Effects, because then you're just going to destroy all the drakes that you played with it anyway. Uh, so I will just scoop up another Wrath here. Highly doubt I will wield Talrand at this point. We're very late in the picks, but uh, who knows? Maybe it'll happen. Um, Pact of Negation does allow you to hold up a counterspell even when you have zero mana, but you do have to pay five in your next turn. It is an interesting card. That might be the pick, because I'm not doing God's Willing. Maybe Illyrios gives me a couple blockers early game. Spectral Sailor can draw some cards, and it's a flash card. I'll just go with Pact of Negation there. I'm fine with the auto picker, because that is uh, it's definitely the most interesting pick. I'd like to try it out, I guess. Patient Rebuilding can mill our opponents out. Micaeus is definitely not for our deck, so it's like Seal Away or Patient Rebuilding. Oh, it's going to take Reassembling Skeleton. Let's not do that. Let's <laughs> scoop up one of those two cards. So I've scooped up the Patient Rebuilding. And Sphinx's Revelation did not wheel. Sad day, indeed. Sejiri Shelter is one of the better flip cards, but obviously it is really good at protecting creatures, and I don't know how much I care about protecting creatures in this deck. At the same time, I'm not playing a Shepherd of the Flock, and Spark Double's not going to do a whole lot, so I guess Sejiri Shelter it is. Glacial Fortress did wheel. We could take that over just a counterspell here. Oh, Shalai and, um, I don't remember what I wanted to wheel out of this pack. That wasn't Shalai. It's been too long, but none of the stuff wheeled, so Dawn of Hope would be best in a slow deck, because it gives you a mana sink in the late game. Yorian wheeled? How did, hmm, I don't remember what I wanted out of that pack that didn't wheel, but I feel like it's weird that whatever, whatever I passed there didn't wheel, and then Yorian did. I don't know. Because Yorian is just really easy to slot into more decks because of the hybrid mana. Um, yeah, these all kind of whatever. Take the little life linker. Take the little fibble fib. Take the winged words. I need to cut a lot of cards, as you do in cube. Very sad at the lack of Sphinx's revelation, but. Other than that, I think this deck has pretty high potential. I need to cut 13 cards here. Well, first of all, Emiria's Call is a land. Umar Wizard is a land. Selendi Vision is a land. Uh, Sejiri Shelter as well. So I think with four, with four flip lands, I'm cool to just cut like one Plains, one Island. Maybe even cutting one more land? Probably not, though. My curve is pretty high, and it's likely to stay pretty high. 
So now I've got 12, 13, 14, I have 15 natural lands and four flip lands, so I have potentially 19 lands, but four of these are stuff that I'm going to play as spells when I've got the mana to do so, so I think that's a fine mana base. So I do need to cut 11 cards then. Okay, Dauntless Bodyguard, not really for this. Alcyid, not really. Donna Hope, maybe not. Could cut the Fairgrounds Warden, because now I've got Wrath of God, Perilous Vault, Cleansing Nova, and uh, Realm Cloak Giant. So I have four different Wrath effects. That seems like a lot of ways to blow myself out with Fairgrounds Warden, so I will get rid of that. I only have one way to blow myself out with Cast Out, that's Perilous Vault. So I think I can leave Cast Out in, plus I can cycle that. Stram's Expertise seems weird in this deck. It kind of just was the only white card in the pack when we got it. Angel of Invention, we took that earlier when we were planning on going wide. I mean, it is even good by itself. By itself, it's a 5-mana five, 5... No, 5-mana five 4-3 Flying Vigilance lifelink. I mean, that's pretty good. That is, like, that's better than a Sarah Angel. You're losing one toughness for lifelink. Pretty impressive by itself, even. So maybe I want to leave it in, but I feel like I, I kind of have enough th threats otherwise. How many Enter the Battlefield effects do I have for Yorian? That is another question here. I have Harmonious Archon. Cloud Blazer. Gear Hulk would not work. Angel of Invention. And I could reset counters on one of these Planeswalkers, I guess. Exclusion Mage as well. Birth of Miletus. I actually do have quite a few under the battlefield effects, so Yorian might be okay here. It would also reset the counters on Maze Mind Totem if I'm just trying to draw more cards rather than gain life. Yeah, Yorian might actually be okay here. I've got a lot going on at 5 mana though. Maybe I take Patient Rebuilding out? Just kind of trying to kill people with my Flyers or my Planeswalkers or something. I need to cut four more cards. Overwhelming Splendor is really expensive, but man, does that just shut somebody down if you can cast it. Uh, Pact of Negation is basically like a 5-mana counterspell, so I should put it at like... I don't know, I could play it on... Um, no, I couldn't play it on turn 4, because then I'd untap with only 4 lands and lose. So yeah, it's got to be 5 or more. I don't really want to cut any of my early drops... Because uh, I, I want to not just die to, like, Mono Red. Elspeth still feels weird to me, just making a bunch of 1-1s. One one Cut her for now. This is a deck that I... If I were really smart, I would probably make a lot of, uh, a lot of changes to as I play the games. As I see what works and what doesn't. Uh... But I'm, I'm really not great at that. And I'll probably forget. I could probably cut Perilous Vault. It is my slowest Wrath effect, and I have four Wraths right now. Maybe just go down to just three Wraths with my, my early game blockers and stuff to tide me off till I draw one of the three. If that is the, the purest form of the game plan, which it might be. <laughs> Still need to cut two more cards. This is not a, a kind of deck I'm particularly comfortable with building either. I'm not super confident with my, my cuts, but we'll see how it goes. This deck looks really cool on paper, that's for sure. I do just cut more threats, just cut an angel and cut I like Skycat as a mana sink that is also an early game blocker if I just need to chump one more cut 
Am I just cutting the Pact of Negation? That might be just a little too cute. Yeah, we can cut Pact of Negation. Alright, let's turn the card styles off. Um, oh, do I actually own that? No. Alright, <laughs> we'll just do the regular version. Um, I don't really like the warbly effect. Alright, I think that's all the styles. I do like the Eldraine showcase arts, though. Those are great. Alright, this is the deck. White, blue, control. Zorius control, some would say. Uh, let's just head into our second round of the new Arena Cube. See how it does. Certainly pretty different from our first deck. I guess the one thing from our first deck that would be awesome to just still have in this deck is uh, Torrential Gear Hulk and Sublime Epiphany. If I could do that again, <laughs> if I could do that in every cube draft, that would just be incredible. That is just such a phenomenal combo. Absolutely insane. You just copy Gear Hulk again. <sighs> Ridiculous. This hand is quite good, I think. Birth of Miletus will help us survive if our opponent is on a very aggressive early game plan. And then, obviously, Wrath of God. We're going to try to two or three for one our opponent with that later on. Could just play a Sky Cat Sovereign and just uh, just start pooping out cats. Um, but I could even play that turn three. So I'll play Birth of Miletus first. If our opponent still doesn't cast a creature this turn, then I'll drop Sky Cat. But if they do, I might just play an Island Hold Off for Merfolk Trickster. And, obviously, Wrath of God. They play a Branching Evolution, so still no creature. So I could just drop the Skycat Sovereign then, and, uh... Try to just start pooping out flyers. And get in that way. So, Branching Evolution means they are on a plus one, plus one counter kind of strategy. Uh-oh, Temple Garden untapped means a four drop inbound. Or they needed a second white mana. Ooh, it is a three drop. They did need a second white mana. So it's History of Banalia. We draw into Karn. I could just play Karn right now and I can just use my, my wall to block things. Or I can poop out a cat and attack for two in the sky. Or I can hold up a Merfolk Trickster. I think I just drop Karn. Start getting some value here. There's a land and a land, basically. <laughs> so Jerry Shelter or an island. Shelter is definitely better than the island, so they are going to exile that one. I'll go ahead and attack here. There's no reason not to. I'm not going to chump block. I'm just going to block with my 0 4. Even if they kill my 0 4 and attack Karn for 2, that's fine. Let him go to 4 rather than lose the Sky Cat right now. Song of Freilis. So their creatures can all tap for a mana now, and then they're all going to get a plus and plus one counter on the third mode, which will be two plus and plus one counters with branching evolution. So I'm actually in a position where I might be really wanting to push into a Wrath of God here. If they play another creature, I might just Wrath immediately, because that'll shut off History of Banalia and Song of Freilis, but... Um, if they don't, then I might just hold up a Great Shark, or a Merfolk Trickster or something. I'll be at 5 mana next turn, so I'll be 3 mana away from Splendor. This might actually be a game where we're trying to close it out with Overwhelming Splendor, which could be fun. However, our opponent is like white green, so they could very well be a pretty token heavy deck. Um, that would have just tons of 1 1s anyway, and try to just make a bunch of 1 1s instead. So, Thalia is pretty annoying. She's going to make my, my effects cost one more. She's a soldier, not a knight, so she won't get plus 2 plus 1 next turn. So, next turn, these both get plus 2 plus 1. They send in with two 4 power creatures. I can chump block. I can just chump block both if I'm planning on wrathing the turn after that. So I think I play an island, hold up Trickster or Great Shark, and then just Wrath of God next turn so that um, 
If they play any more creatures, I can wrath all that stuff away too, and I get the wrath down before they get their two plus and plus one counters on all their creatures with the branching evolution. So, uh, I guess I can use Karn's ability first. I don't really want that Sejiri thing, so I'll just use a plus one again. I guess my minus two does make a two two right now, because um, I have a, a wall, but I think I'd still rather just draw some cards here. So now I have Warrant and Warden in my exile, so I might actually use Karn's minus ability next turn. But for now, we are going to pass. We're holding up enough mana to cast a Voracious Great Shark to counter something crazy. Not super likely to do that, because then Great Shark is going to die to Wrath as well. Um, Merfolk Trickster I might play. And if I don't want to play either of these things because of Wrath Effect, I can just make a third chump blocker to make sure that Karn is super safe. That is probably the most likely thing to happen here. Just chump block with all my creatures, send out a Wrath next turn. Savage Stomp Thalia onto my wall. Okay. Oh, it does two counters because of Branching Evolution. Okay. I was going to say it mildly confused, but that works. So if I want Karn to still have seven counters, I need to play Merfolk Trickster and tap down one of their creatures here. Um, doesn't seem super necessary, though. I think I can just make a chump blocker and let Karn take four. Go to three counters, because that's still, that's still enough when they're not going to have any creatures out next turn. So Karn will go to three here. And we will just wrath the board and pick up Warrant and Warden. Unfortunately, I don't have enough mana to Wrath and hold up something, so that's not awesome. But it's fine. I don't have to worry about Song of Freilies this way. What was lost is now returned. We'll just play the Revealed Land, pass the turn, and there goes Song of Freilies. No plus and plus one counters on any creatures here. Pretty awesome. Felidar Retreat is not very cool. I have six mana, so I'm two mana away from Overwhelming Splendor. Actually, only one mana away after I play my land this turn, so that's pretty awesome. Um, but yeah, Felidar Retreat is something to worry about. I don't have any way to deal with it right now. Let's use Karn's Plus. Sajiri Shelter is not going to do much here. Protect something. Oh my god, Cloud Blazer or Ugin? Imagine having to choose out of that. So I guess we get to cast a Cloud Blazer this turn. Um, and then next turn we can just play Ugin instead of Overwhelming Splendor and just absolutely just go ham. Wow, we are in a fantastic position here. I just need to make sure I win before I mill myself with all the value I'm getting. So I have enough mana to hold up Merfolk Trickster and Warden, and Warden here, so Karn should be super safe. So we can uh, pick up Ugin next turn and cast an Ugin, and that should pretty much be game. Just Ugin, exile their little enchantments, and win. I guess exile their token as well. We could also do Overwhelming Splendor, but Ugin's going to be much more impressive. Or Eugene, I should say. Now we're definitely using Eugene, because we need to wrath that stuff away. can't believe I'm not even saying it right. It's absolutely Eugene. The time has come. Eugene for five. We should attack with Cloud Blazer first, because Cloud Blazer is going to get exiled. Since I have to do five for Tristani. But Karn does not get exiled because Karn is colorless. Pretty brutal. Pretty brutal. This really just feels like uh, a constructed control deck here. This is absolutely insane. There's Angel of Invention that's going to rebuild their field. I assume, yeah, I was gonna say, I assume that's spreading out, because if it doesn't, uh, if it doesn't, I can just shoot it for three with Ugin. All right, so what do we do here? With an Angel of Invention out, they have a couple two twos. I guess I have Warden and Warden up. I can play Harmonious, Harmonious Archon, and then I've got yeah, I've got plenty of blockers if I play Harmonious Archon. 
and then I just shoot the uh, the Angel of Invention. And I can block the servos with my three threes, and I start attacking with the Archon. Uh, what's in my exile right now? Sajiri Shelter. So I can pick up Shajiri Shelter, put Karn to one, and then I have protection for the Archon. Or I just draw another card here. Let's just draw another card here. Whatever one they choose. Search for Escanta or Exclusion Mage. Both are pretty great. So if I play Search for Escanta right now, I don't have the mana up for uh, Essence Scatter. So I'm just going to hold and be extra safe. And not just Essence Scatter. Essence Scatter or Warrant or Merfolk Trickster. And there's the scoop. Absolutely brutal showing from Azoria's control there. We ended with seven cards in hand, Ugin and Karn on board, and our opponent had two, th two three threes, uh, which were just one one servos. Harmonies Archon made him three threes, uh, and one card in hand. So, wow, that was um, that was just a by the book Azorius control game right there. Super brutal. I actually need to check if I can reset my uh, dailies right now. I cannot, so I'm only going to get 500 gold today. Sad, but I'll take it. Let's head into our next round, see if the deck can keep it up. But um, that that game made me feel pretty confident. That was, that was some classic control plays. All right. Uh-oh, we're up against the Grudge Bearer. Hopefully they don't have a grudge against me right now. Hopefully we haven't played yet. Awkward hand, a lot of high mana cost stuff. My deck does in general have a lot of high mana cost stuff. I do have Trickster turn two, so I have some early... I have an early blocker, but it kind of blocks two things because it taps one down and blocks the other one if they've got two things, so I feel mildly safe. Oh, I wish they had these, um, the country sleeves uh, on sale at all times. I missed when they happened, so I didn't get any. But those are pretty cool. Just play an island past the turn. I might be able to, uh, to surprise kill Stone Coil Serpent. We'll see what's in their hand here. They might have, uh, just a lightning strike or something to shoot Trickster before. Uh, before blocks. Let's see. Oh, just a pump spell. Integrity and Intervention. So that could have been used as a, a deal three damage thing later in the game. Drew another five drop. Not exactly what I'm looking for right now, but we're not under... Okay, now we're under immense pressure. I was going to say we're not under immense pressure, but we are now. Oh, it can't mentor Stone Coil Serpent because Stone Coil Serpent has protection for multicolored and it's multicolored. Okay, so I get to play Karn. I can make a 1 1 token with Karn. Karn goes to 3, and then I can trade the token with Stone Coil Serpent. Or I can use my plus ability. They have 4 power. If they don't have another haste creature, Karn doesn't immediately die. Uh, Karn will go to 2, which is enough to minus 1 and grab whatever they exiled. So I think I'll, I'll plus 1 Karn here. If they just attack at Karn with everything, that's that's fine for me too. Um, and with those cards as the ones that are going to be exiled, I doubt they do. I doubt they're attacking Karn here because it's not a scary card at all. Skycat Sovereign. Not a great draw. I was really hoping for for like Maze Mind Tome and a land, and then they would just like default give me the land because I really need to hit my fifth land here. This, this game pretty much all comes down to that. If I hit my fifth land, I win. Because uh, I'm just going to Cleansing Nova and wipe their whole board. They've only got two cards in hand after that. Um, if I don't hit my fifth land, I'm in a bad shape. Uh, I think I pretty much lose if I don't hit my fifth land. Because I'm at ten, I'll take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I guess I'm not technically dead if I don't hit my fifth land. So that's plus Karn again. Come on, two lands off the top. Don't even give them the option. Crawling Barons or Warrant and Warden? Oh no, they're going to give me Warrant Warden. They gave me Crawling Barons. Okay, that's really surprising to me, but I'm super happy with it. I suppose, you know, they have no idea what's in my hand. Um, so they just see land, non-land. They're like, whatever, take the land. So let's just wipe that board. Goodbye to my Merfolk Trickster, but I am now chilling at 10 with a pretty full grip. 
against Ranger of Eos. Uh-oh, that does pick up two one-drops so they can get a haste creature off that, like Fanatical Firebrand. They might have another one. Not another Fanatical Firebrand, but another one-drop haste creature. They have Giant Killer and Dauntless Bodyguard, so they do have uh, more creatures to play. So they're probably just going to go to combat before playing any of those if I just pass turn. So Great Shark, leaving Great Shark up doesn't seem great for me. I think I play Cloud Blazer and just chump block the Ranger of Eos, because if I play Cloud Blazer, they're going to put Dauntless Bodyguard out first on Ranger of Eos, possibly. Um, so then I'll be trading Cloud Blazer for the Ranger, but that seems fine. Or the Bodyguard. But yeah, I want to gain some life, draw some cards here. And I have Yorian and a land. I can put Skycat Sovereign or Warrants and Warden into my hand. Neither of those are things I need immediately. Uh, so I can just do that next turn. So I'll just use the plus ability again. They don't have any haste creatures, so I don't need a random 1-1 uh, random one -one blocker. Uh, so they give me a planes, so I'll play the planes. And now I can even cycle cast out if I want, but that is not likely to happen. So I have six mana, two mana away from Ugin, which will be another Wrath effect that will hopefully uh, just solidly give me the game at that point. Anax, hardened in the forge it is, so they can play Anax and both their one drops. Pretty scary. So now when I trade Cloud Blazer for Ranger of Eos, they get a 1-1 one, one Satyr that can't block. The can't block doesn't matter here, I am not an aggressive deck, but it's just worth mentioning, that's part of the text on the Satyrs. Alright, so we are going to trade with the Dauntless Bodyguard here. Turn that 2-1 into a 1-1 one, one Satyr. Decent combos from our opponents. But we need as much life as we can possibly get. We're not going to sit here and take damage. What I could do otherwise. So I'm two mana away from Ugin now. I play a land and then next turn I can do it. So if I play a land, I'm at seven mana. At seven mana, I could cast Maze Mind Tome and Yorian. That doesn't seem great. At seven mana... If I'm just playing one thing, I guess I cast. I can cast out something. Uh, I think I'm actually just going to play Umara Wizard as a land to guarantee that I have eight mana next turn, and then I can, um, I can grab Warrant Warden, or I can just make a one-one blocker. I think I just make a one-one Chump blocker, honestly. So let's make a one-one Chump blocker. Play this as a land. Now I'm holding up... I guess I could play Harmonious Archon as well, then I have a ton of blockers. Which is interesting. And Ugin I can do for only four, so Harmonious Archon would survive, my my Chumpers would not. But I still think, yeah, this is pretty big. This is pretty big. I was considering passing and just holding up, like, Cast Out or Great Shark here, uh, and just Chumping for a turn. Um, that way I'm not, like, committing more to the board that I'm just gonna Wrath anyway. Um, I totally forgot about Giant Killer. I totally forgot about Giant Killer. I probably should have just held. That was dumb of me. Oh, Mentor of the Meek coming out as well, so they can start drawing cards when they're playing stuff like Giant Killer. Of course, not going to happen, because I will be casting Eugene. My boy. My buddy. Um, Wow, I actually get to keep my 1-1 one -one then, because uh, I can just chump there, chump there. No point in double blocking, because I'm going to be exiling everything with Eugene, so they won't be getting 1-1 one -one satyrs. Anyway. Alright, so Eugene's gotta be for four. One, two, three, four. Exile all their stuff. No satyrs for them. And there's the game, because I've got a full grip. Not a full grip, but I've got five cards in hand. I've got Karn on board to bring back Ward and Ward into my hand. And I've got a 1-1 still on the board to chump block if they manage to play a haste creature. So there's another game in the bag. Uh, Karn plus Eugene combo twice in a row is pretty brutal. Um, it's absolutely insane to be able to wrath the board and leave both of your planeswalkers out because they're both colorless. It's pretty ridiculous. Let's head into round three. I do have a Birth of Miletus. This is very heavily white, but our deck is primarily white, so we're not under a huge amount of pressure to draw islands. Um, 
and the hand looks pretty good otherwise. We've got Birth of Miletus is really good at just holding off for a bit. We've got that 0-4 wall, give us a little bit of life gain, hold off till we hit that 5 mana for cast off. Um, yeah, I'm gonna keep here. You know, I don't particularly like not having uh, a blue source, but it's really not the end of the world with this hand. Our opponent starts off with a Llanowar Elves, and search for Azkanta for us. Well, we'll get rid of another Plains in our deck, so we're now going to be slightly more likely to draw an island than a Plains. Or slightly more likely to draw an island than we would have been if we didn't take out another Plains from our deck. Kiora is the next play for our opponent. I guess we're going to cast Umara Wizard. Or not cast, we're just going to play it to have a blue source, because at three mana we don't have anything else to play anyway. So Kiora means they're going to be drawing cards whenever they play creatures with power four or greater, so that is pretty powerful. That'll make sure they still have value, they still have gas in their hand, even if I do play a Wrath effect. Um, if they're playing like four drops into the Wrath. Or four power creatures into the Wrath, I should say. And Ugin is going to be a great play later. Do I have anything for four mana? I don't have anything for four mana, so I kind of want to just play this uh, Emiria Shattered Skyclave tapped, because I'm going to need to hit eight mana this game, so I'm very unlikely to hit enough basics to where I'm actually holding Emiria's call for the rest of this game. So I'm going to play it tapped. They're green-white, so they're unlikely to have haste creatures unless they have the Questing Beast. So my 0-4 is just going to block Solemn Simulacrum. Ladder Elves will probably be tapping for mana, even if it isn't. It's only going to attack for one, so I don't really need a blocker. I kind of want to just play Search, uh, so I can set up my future draws now. Playing Skycat Sovereign would open me up to the ability to, um, to start making 1-1s one -ones next turn. Mirari's Wake is pretty scary. They're going to have a lot of mana now, and they're going to cast a Vivian. So we're we're all in on Eugene. We're going to need to hit eight mana really badly because we need to exile these Planeswalkers because uh, they are going to they're going to take over the game by themselves. This is really bad. I'm taking four. I'm sacking my 4 I guess I'm going to wait on it. If they want to use the minus to kill my zero four, that's fine. And if not, I can. Um, if not, I can of course. Uh, chump block. So, do I want to cast off? They are going to have two cards in hand after this with ten mana up. They can cast whatever's in their hand after this. I don't think I'm casting off here. Because if I cast off, they draw another card, too. They're going to have three cards in hand and a million mana to play with. So I just play Skycat Sovereign, let them shoot that with something. Otherwise, just get another chump blocker out there. I want to hold off on the cast off to potentially hit more things. Because I'm still I'm still a ways away from Eugene. The Great Henge. That unfortunately costs like a million mana, so... Um, Eugene's not going to kill that one. Oh my god. Yeah, there's Kogla the Titanate to kill my flyer. And they probably just shoot my blocker with Vivian. Or it's just going to chump block this turn. This is not good at all. Okay, I'm so glad that's not an ape giant. I was like, wait a second, that's a giant ape right there. Is that an ape giant? No. So we'll stop five. We'll stop four damage here, I guess, and take five. They only have two cards in hand after this, so maybe cast off is enough to, to help me for a second. But I guess they only had to uh, anyways. I think I'm tossing this in my grave. I've got one, two, three, four, five. I'll have six lands right now. I really need to hit lands, so I'm just throwing that in a grave. Solendi Vision is potentially a land, so I'm playing it as a land. All right, they're going to draw another card. They're going to have three cards in hand with a ton of man mana and uh, some Planeswalkers. They also have Vivian's minus five to grab a creature from their sideboard, which is not great. But luckily, Harmonious Archon will come out, uh, and it'll give me three chump blockers. With Mirari's Wake out, all their creatures are getting plus one, plus one. So they're going to be larger than three threes. They're going to be four fours instead of three threes. So all my creatures are basically just be chump blockers. Um, but it'll let me survive until hopefully I can cast Ugin. 
Finale of Devastation for 14 so they can bring something out, give it plus X, plus X in haste. I think I'm immediately just dead then. Yeah, it gets plus 14, plus 14 haste. There's no way I'm not dead. Oh, they can choose Graveyard too? Yeah, Library and or Graveyard. All right, I guess I'm taking 23, going to negative 10. I'm going to scoop them up. They're just still adding all these right now. All right, that was brutal. Um, I think if it weren't for Finale, we definitely had a path to stabilize that game. It was going to be Harmonious Archon to have multiple blockers, just trump everything in the world, and then cast Eugene the turn after that, try to exile everything. We'd still be in a really rough position after that because our opponent was getting tons of value um, with all of their different ways to draw multiple cards a turn. Um, so our opponent was definitely... They had a very nice deck and a, a very nice run that game. But um, we may have had a chance if we didn't get finaled. Not a huge chance, but a chance nonetheless. Um, with a search for his Kanta to mill more lands if we hit too many, I think I'm actually just going to play Wizard as a land again. <laughs> I'm probably just never casting that as a 4-3, but the option is always there if we draw that top deck at late game. Uh, yeah, drop search. There's a pelt collector out for our opponents. That'll get bigger every time they play a creature that's larger than it. So, bam, that's a Rimrock Knight turning pelt collector into a 2 2. That's another land. I do need five mana, so I'll keep it for now. Exclusion Mage can help slow down our opponents. I think we return Pelt Collector and trade with Rimrock Knight. Sure, we have a Wrath coming up, but I want to slow down my opponent and stop as much damage as possible, and also not make it suspicious and very obvious that I'm holding up a Wrath by just not playing anything ever. So they can replay Pelt Collector. If they're going to play Pelt Collector this turn, um, I think they would have done it before combat, because whenever a creature that's bigger than it dies, it also gets a plus one plus one counter. So yeah, they're playing Ronas then, which is indestructible, so that will not get Wrath. We're going to throw that land in the grave, that is not what I'm looking for, and Voracious Great Shark's pretty nice. So I guess we're passing turn, holding nothing up right now. two cards in grave. We need seven to flip this. So Ronas can only attack if they control another creature with power four or greater, but with four mana up, they're very likely to play one. Yep. And Gyrus, Armored Killer, makes uh, makes Ronas active. Overwhelming Splendor? We've got an eight drop now. Play a land, hold up Great Shark, I think. Cleansing Nova's just going to be killing one in Gyrus. Which is not great. Voracious Great Shark, at worst, can just trade with Angiris, so it does the same thing as Cleansing Nova. At best, we're going to counter something and then trade with Angiris. Yeah, they're attacking for 9 here with an ability to give plus 2, plus 0, oh, so they could potentially be attacking for 11. I kind of have to just trade. I think Ronus is just going to get me. Having an indestructible creature is really good against, uh, against Wrath effects. It's just going to be a huge problem. They're going to dump the mana in, get a couple more damage in, and send down a Pelt Collector, I'm assuming. Luckily, Pelt Collector is not big enough to activate Ronus on its own. Um, drawing a land here is not good, even though I, it helps me hit Overwhelming Splendor. I just don't have a game plan without it. I'm not going to Cleansing Nova a single 1-1, one -one, so i got to throw this in the graveyard and hope to draw something better. Maybe a Cloud Blazer would be like my best draw here gain a couple life, and have a blocker for Pelt Collector. Uh, Hypnotic Sprite does not have Flash, unfortunately, so I can't play this as a chump blocker um, after countering one of their spells, which means if I don't if I don't play it right now and they end up casting a creature with four power, I'll just die, so I kind of have to just play it now. 
Sejiri's Shelter, I could use that to make sure Hypnotic Sprite can survive this turn. They can't just removal spell it. But if they use a removal spell, I don't think they'll be able to play a removal spell and a four power creature this turn. Um, actually, if they play a single land, they can pump Pelt Collector twice, which will activate Ronus. So that's actually... Oh, that's brutal. This Ronus is just going to destroy my life. I needed, uh, I needed to cast out or something. I needed to exile removal for Ronus to win this one. And we are just not there. So, pretty sure this one's in the bag for our opponent. If they play a basic land, they double pump Pelt Collector, swing in with both, and I die to trample. Um, if they play a 4 power creature, that's bad too. And they do play a 4 power creature, that means they're just going to attack with both anyway. Discard their hand, draw 3. Okay. We are going to block Ronus. There's no reason to give protection from green here because I'm going to Cleansing Nova next turn to kill these two so that maybe they don't draw another creature to kill me with. Um, they probably did, they just drew three. They're very likely to have one, but that's that's playing to our outs here. Would just be Cleansing Nova and hope for the best. They have to exile eight cards from their graveyard for the Ox, so at least they don't have enough to just escape the Ox and win that way. But they will soon. Maze Mind Tome is not going to do it for me. I guess we'll transform it. Yorian? Not going to do it either. All right, we're cleansing Novang. Destroy all creatures. Please don't have a power four or greater creature. Even if they have a three power creature that costs three or less, I die. Or a two power creature, even. Because they can just play it and then pump it. All right, Elder Gargaroth it is. Means that is lethal. Man. Ronus just kicking butt and taking names that game. That game was essentially just all Ronus. Without that, we could have easily just played around with our Wraths and stuff. Brutal stuff, but... I do like that, um... While I am losing these games, I don't feel like, um... I don't feel like it's because of any massive uh, shortcomings on, on the deck or the gameplay. I feel like the deck is pretty fun and pretty good, so... It just, uh, just happens sometimes. Sometimes you get really beat down. I feel like this is... It's another kind of slow hand, but I, I'm gonna keep it. Obviously hoping to draw one of the cards in our two drop slots. Just the five drop. Pass. They do start with Kazandu Valley, so they're on green with Kazandu Mammoth in the deck, and they drop a bag of holding. And an island. Okay, good to see that even though I won't be playing any one drops or two drops anytime soon, at least our opponent is not curving out yet. Give us a little bit of time. Wrath of God costing four is pretty huge. Because that means we'll have a Wrath really early if we need it, instead of like turn five like the rest of ours. Elvish Rejuvenator, so they're ramping up in this green-blue build. Uh, Hydroid Crisis, basically at any point, would be really bad. Um, in most control decks, you're trying to win by getting a much larger amount of card advantage than your opponent has, and these green-blue decks can have a lot of draw of their own. So that will be hard to, uh, hard to contend with. So yeah, we're really trying to win by like three for one our opponents with wrath effects and then stuff like Cloud Blazer to draw cards of our own. So, kind of scared about the uh, the matchup in terms of colors here. And there's Oracle of Muldaya, another rampy green blue value card, because now they're drawing lands off the top. Ooh, Thassa's Intervention. Counterspell unless its controller pays X twice. Well, I'm glad that got revealed, because now I will remember to play around that.
when they've got the mana up. Problem is, they have a million mana, <laughs> just like already, so they're very likely to always have the mana up for Thassa's intervention, so that's a little rough. That is a little rough indeed. Salundi Vision. Luckily, they've only got the one, though, so... Do I want a Wrath? Oracle of Muldaya and Elvish Rejuvenator? I feel like I don't, but if I if I don't do that, then uh, then they'll just have a counter spell up in the future. I think I'm just gonna pass turn and either cast out or Salendi Vision here, and just hope that like cast out gets countered, something like that. Another counter spell, <laughs> neutralize. All right, uh, so I guess we're playing against green blue counter spell control, so that will not be fun. We'll try to cast out Oracle of Muldaya. It probably gets countered. But that gets rid of one of the counter spells if it does. It does not. Okay. I guess I'm just taking one here then. Oh my god, they have Nibble Obstructionist so they can cycle it and counter an activated ability, so they counter cast out's ability. That was brutal. That's just absolutely ridiculous. Plus, since they discarded it and they have Bag of Holding out, it, uh, it gets exiled into the Bag of Holding so they can put it back in their hand with the four mana. Opponent is on them. Combos. Oh my god. That is so rough. Now they have two counter spells in hand. I am really not feeling good about this game. I feel like I might be about to go 2-3 with this deck, and I feel like it's, it's a pretty sick deck. That is a really sad run, if this is where we're at. But at the same time, every cube deck looks insane. So, maybe our deck's decent, but our opponent's decks are, are just better. They are, they're coming off hot with these insane combos. So, luckily my opponent only has double blue up, so they can't counter something. Unless they have a third counter in their hand, because they could counter it unless I pay zero twice, which I could absolutely do right now. So I, I could just cast off and kill their two dudes, or I can just play uh, Cloud Blazer. I'm going to do that, because they've got a 1-1 one, one and a 2-2. Two, two. I'm just going to play Cloud Blazer. That can trade with an Oracle if they send it in, and now I'm getting some value of my own. Draw a couple cards, don't mind if I do that too. What now, opponent? Land. Shark Typhoon! Oh, I am so losing this game. I don't have anything to get rid of Shark Typhoon right now, and now anytime they play a non-creature spell, they get an XX Shark where X is its mana cost, so they'll get a 3-3 Shark when they cast Neutralize, they'll get an XX Shark when they cast Thassa's Intervention. That is one of the things I don't like that they did. It used to be that the converted mana cost of these spells was just for X is zero, but now the converted mana cost is whatever you spent X as. So if they spend two blue and like six, then it counts as CMC eight for Shark Typhoon. At least I think so. There was some kind of weird rules change like that uh, with converted mana cost of spells on the stack. So yeah, Shark Typhoon is a big deal, uh, and I don't have my cleansing, um, cleansing Nova to just destroy all artifacts and enchantments. That would be pretty huge here though. Destroy Bag of Holding and Shark Typhoon would not be bad at all. Um, they've got a Boon of the Wish Giver coming up too, so they can cast that, draw four cards, and make a 6-6. Six, six. So they're tapped out right now. Which means whatever I want to do here, I can do. But I, I just don't have anything great to do. Like, I'm wrathing away their 2-2 their two, two, and 1-1 one, one for my 2-2 two, two flyer. Or... I'm just, like, playing a Luris. I've got six mana, so I can play uh, Luris and Solindi Vision next turn. Maybe get them to counterspell during their own turn, not have the mana up during mine. Yeah, I'll go with that. I'll cast Luris. I'm holding up Merfolk Trickster or Scatter or Solindi Vision. Uh, we'll just see what they do and roll from there. I guess I get to hit them for two flying. Before they make a bunch of flying sharks, let's get that one swing in.
Maze Mine Tome on top for them. Maybe I can hope they just mill out with all this uh, this value they've got. They're at 19 cards, I'm at 25. They've drawn six more cards than me. A lot of that is the, uh, the bag of holding shenanigans. But it is, it's impressive. The amount of value going on right now. Well, we know everything in their hand except one card. That they, they've currently just had that all game, because Oracle does show us everything they've drawn. So they're going to cycle that, it'll go into the Bag of Holding, another nice combo. Drawing the Maze Mind Tome off the top, and now there's a Rish car on top. Maze Mind Tome has been cast, spitting out a 2-2 Flying Shark. And they still have six mana up. Six mana up, tons of counters, whatever this thing does. Actually, it's a sorcery, so it's not a counter. Not something to super worry about until they cast it. Let's see. Return two creatures, scry two, draw two, and create an XX or X and a card from hand. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright. So they're gonna have a bunch of uh, bunch of tokens, basically. Collected company on top now, they're down to 17 cards in library. This would be a matchup where if I were uh, if I were in best 203, I think I would definitely sideboard in patient rebuilding here. So Trickster or Salindy Vision. I guess I'm just gonna cast Salindy Vision, see if it gets countered. They've got enough mana to uh, counter multiple things. Oh my god, I didn't hit one. I did not hit an instant or sorcery. Karn, Great Shark, Yorian, Skycat. None of these are really good right now, so it's okay. I mean, nothing's really good right now because it'll all just get countered. Uh, Two four four angels, but they have two counter spells right now. I'm considering which one of these I want to play as a land. I definitely want to play one of them as a land. If I play a Myria's Call, as, I could play a Myria's Call as a land just because that's much more likely to get countered, and they have multiple counters. But I could also play Sajiri Shelter as a land and try to start using some Wrath effects uh, in a second and just get the counter spells out of the way that that way. Oh, it just feels like there's not a lot I can do because Shark Typhoon is going to be. Oh, it's just making giant creatures every time they do anything. Uh, I'm gonna play Shijiri Shelter as a land. I can Wrath of God and still hold up Essence Scatter. But I still don't want to Wrath yet. Because right now my board is still slightly better than theirs. I still want to hold off another turn before I start throwing Wraths into counter spells. Because I feel like at this point they just wouldn't even counter it. They'd be like, okay, fine. You Wrath and I'll Althasa's Intervention for like five or something. Or yeah, just keep using the Bag of Holding, true. They've got a Crawling Barons on top, very good card. And the cast collected company getting a 4 4 flyer and maybe some more cards off the top six. Nope, they missed on the collected company. I know that feel, and it's happened many times before for me. Oh, Voracious Hydra on top, so that will be massive. Two green and X, they've got 5, 6, 7, 10, 11, 12. That'll be a 10 10. Or if they choose to just double the counters instead of fight something, it'll be a 20, 23. I feel like they'll fight something, though. Because at that point, you don't, the difference between 10 and 20 power is not that huge. Like, either one of those is just going to be the biggest creature on board and kill me in basically one swing. Alright, Inscription of Insight is going to put both of my creatures back into my hand and make a giant shark. So... Now we're just trying to somehow get them into a position 
where they don't have the mana up for a counter spell so that I can Wrath on my turn. So hopefully there will be some way in which we can do a really tricky Merfolk Trickster play that they'll want to counter. Um, but if not, maybe they try to play the Hydra and I counter it. I doubt it though. They've got four mana up here. So if I play Trickster here, I tap down one of the four four flyers and then I can block Oracle Muldaya and trade. I take three. If I wait on the Trickster, I'll take seven, but then I'll trade. I think I want to wait on the Trickster to potentially kill this Oracle. And that make them that might make them more prone to countering it here. Because now they know I can just eat their Oracle. They probably won't counter it. Yeah, they don't. They don't go for it. They don't go for the bait. Yeah, whatever. I'll I'll tap the that flying shark, I guess. But I want to kill the oracle. I suppose I could kill the the other flying shark of theirs instead. But now I'm doing oracle there. So they have four mana up. I don't have enough mana to try to wrath twice here. I've got six, seven. If I had two four mana wraths, I could do it. But I don't. I have two 5-mana Wraths and a 4-mana Wrath. So Wrath of God's just going to get countered. 7-mana. I could have 8-mana if I play Amiria's Call untapped. If I have 8-mana... Nope, I think I just play Lurus and then try to Wrath. I mean, they have a 3-mana Counterspell that counters anything. So... Um, even if I play Wrath first to leave more mana up to be able to pay... They can just do the three mana one, so... Two four fours. If I do that, do I even survive? Lurus trump blocks there. I gain three, take four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I guess I do survive if Lurus hits If Lurus hits this board. Um, wait, no, I don't. They have Into the Royal. They have Into the Royal, so I just die. All right, well, we'll go for it anyway and see... Oh, I don't have the mana to do that. I need another white to do that. I need another white to try to do that. Okay, well, let's do it. My only out is if they counter this lures. Because I need double white to cast it, double white to, to wrath here. They did not counter the lures, but now I can cast Merfolk Trickster. I guess since I can cast Merfolk Trickster, I could have another, another blocker out, potentially. But I can only cast it during my turn. That's not going to work, because I can only cast it during my turn. If I could cast it during my opponent's turn, it might allow me to survive. Yeah, no. Into the Royal is just going to kill me. Uh, Do I hope they forget to counter, or do I try to play Cloud Blazer? I mean, they'll just counter that, too. Oh, I ran out of time. I ran out of time anyway. I guess I'm holding up Essence Scatter. Doesn't matter. Super dead here, so they just into the Royal Lurus and I'm dead. Now they don't have counter mana up, though, so if I had an instant... If I had Wrath of God at instant speed, bam! Gotcha now. Even if I managed to do with a Wrath effect there, they can now crack the bag of holding and have just a million cards in hand anyway, so... Basically, that whole game, there was... Uh, very little chance of winning. Opponent had some really crazy value engines. Pretty cool stuff to see. Bag of holding with a bunch of cyclers and stuff. Especially with the cyclers that had abilities, that nimble obstructionist was absolutely brutal. Just completely counter my cast out and draw a card with the cycling ability and put it in the bag of holding for later. Insane. So, as you can see, another round of cube, another, another uh, day of some absolutely just nuts decks uh, i thought this deck was was pretty cool uh in the games where i won it it really felt like i was playing like uh, a constructed control deck um so just really really impressive stuff out of cube because i felt like this deck was was pretty powerful it was doing a lot of things and then we played against decks that were just doing even more um uh, absolutely ludicrous uh, value engines and stuff like that so pretty cool what i would do differently if i went back to it i mean i don't even know like 
I guess there's an argument that like in a lot of those games I might have been better off having more having more early game blockers and stuff. More of a better curve to this deck. This deck is pretty heavily loaded at the higher mana cost, but the other thing to think about is like the other way I was losing was just these do these decks were drawing um so many cards anyway. Um like with Ronus, I might have been able to survive a little bit longer with, with a little bit more early game stuff, but I think Ronus was going to kill me anyway. And that last round, our opponent started off pretty much just as slowly as we did. Um, they just ended up in a position where they were drawing so many cards with so many counter spells in hand that I couldn't really do anything, especially once that Shark Typhoon hit the board um, well before we drew Cleansing Nova. So, yeah, I guess in general... Just just fix the curve a little bit, but other than that, I feel like we just got uh, we just got outclassed by very good decks. So that is kind of how Arena Cube does. Let's go ahead and see our prize cards here at the end. If you want to watch some more Magic Arena content, especially more Magic Arena drafts, stick around on the channel for more of those. And I'd like to thank you all for watching, as always, and I will see you again very soon.